Hi, Johnny here. Uh, today is Thursday, uh, the 25th of uh, August 2016. <clears throat> I'm just about to drive down to the east coast, Rutoria, that's uh, north of Gisborne, about uh, two hours from Gisborne, to Port Awanui, um, to our hui, or miti, on Te Horo Marae, which is east of Ruatoria on Waimatitini Road, Waimatitini Road, down that road, past where the radio station is in the middle of the street, carry on going, and then you'll come to <coughs> Port Awanui Road, which goes over the hill towards the beach. The Marae is before the beach, before you climb another hill, it's at the bottom of the hill. So that's where I'm going, right to, um, and drive a little bit at a time. Uh, I'm a trusty little Saab car. Uh, and I just got off the phone to Iru Painga, uh, the chief there, Kamatua of the Marae. And he has cleared the way for me to meet him between 6 and 7 a.m. on Saturday morning to run through the protocols of the Marae because I said I haven't been there at all before and I'm just coming in to have a land meeting on hitting a land blocks and I want to make my intentions clear before I go there just in case anybody don't like me. That will make my decision whether I am going to lease the lands or not. So I'm being straight up with him when I says, he says, I saw the ad, he saw the ad for Moai Tidal Turbines in the Rainflowy Bank and he says, what's that all about? So I said, turbines in the sea to make power from seawater is nothing new. They've already got them in Scotland, big ones, and that's one form of energy on the resources on the sea that we can tap into if I've got that sort of budget I can do it but I need to come and tell you what I think and it's up to you whether you want it or not but the main issue here was the land block that I want to go on and live there I picked that one out apart from <coughs> Marangaro, Marangaro C Todd block at the lighthouse I said I've got uh, a shareholding in there and a shareholding at Rangitukia on the Haho 7B, the Marangaro C12 at the lighthouse. I've got a plan already been approved <coughs> there to have aqua farms on the waterfront and Rangitukia, not quite, but I've got Tamati Reed. I said Tamati Reed is there and I'm the chairman of that organisation and at um, East Cape. And so I'm coming on this land block, more or less, out of the blue. Because it's been put up by Te Tumutumu Whairoa. Trustees, Maori trustees, the old Maori trustees, and I've signed up a lease agreement with them. And he says, oh, I see. <coughs> and I says, I'm just telling you what I'm going to talk about at the hui with the locals the first bit in the morning then the landowners in the afternoon. But I only wanted the marae for the day and I needed to know the protocols of the marae before I do anything on the land. It's up to the marae and the people who want this or not. Because if they don't, they'll tell me. It's not for me to say. And it's just, oh, okay, that's all right. <clears throat> if I start pushing things, then it's not going to work. I don't I've had plenty of practice on marae protocols to know the rules on mar marae's, but one is different to the other. So I'm respecting the first port of call, which is the marae. <coughs> so I am happy we have a marae, even though we were talking three weeks back about hiring the marae. See? So it's up to him, really, 
whether that sort of talk is allowed to be talked about on his marae. So I make sure first, in simple terms, that these are ideas that are there to express first the feeling of the people, not what I think. See? I can go anywhere in the world with this, but I'm picking out people first. If they don't want it, then somebody else will. And I'm afraid somebody else bigger in China or Russia or India or Europe will pick this plan up and me with it. And they'll plonk it anywhere in the world. They might even plonk it right where I wanted to put it and say, we're going to put it over there, under them. And uh, mysterious John Key could end up with this if Maoris don't want it. See, it'll find its way out there with somebody else's authority that I want to make sure to give the first options to our own people before I go anywhere in the world with it. I want to make sure my background is right first. Right? So, <clears throat> I'm happy now. Um, just um, um, in the throes of just packing up and going and make my way down slowly um, to the coast because it's a long drive for me. Make sure I've got everything. Leave the drone behind. I don't think the weather's bad. It's raining. And the drone might fly away and forget me. I, I don't want to lose it in a hurry. I haven't had to play around with it yet, so I'm not going to take it this time. But I'm going to have to, by the looks of it, wait until Tatumutumu has their package out uh, for the heading of blocks because I was wanting to go on the other block where Richard and Leslie Fisher is. And I said to Iru that their lease is up on the 31st of March next year and I wanted to pick up the lease and leave them there to run everything. Um, so uh, I can't think of anybody else to look after this project and whatever we we're doing on the land there. Uh, with Desmond, my <coughs> right hand man down down there, Gisborne, is willing to go there with uh, the fishers to help um, to uh, maintain the property. And I um, know that Desmond will do a very good job um, of the land once we secure the long-term agreement to do what we want to do there. So for the people watching uh, what we're doing online, this is global, uh, that I'm in the commercial field uh, of other people who have more influence over anything in the world than us. And I'm playing that game <coughs> with John Key and his lot. I just want to make this announcement that our court case uh, was a success on Monday the 22nd without me. You see, because I'm waiting for the court case on Cook Street. Uh, for the 29th on Monday next week. So I'll have to race back on after the meeting straight back to Auckland and uh, why I'm not going to dive now or take my dive gear because it, the weather's bad and also I've got to get back and prepare myself for the court hearing. I'm making this public um, um, statement of that part of land and what it is doing to our people, I mean all the people, not just Maoris, but everyone affected by what the Crown is doing to me. If they're doing it to me, they're doing it to you. Okay, that's what I'm a model of what happens in a court when they leave you out and make decisions without you. You see, I want my day in the court. And so I'm fighting my way to get into court and my barrister's trying to shove me off and saying, John, it's all over. We made a decision. The judge made his decision. It's all over. I says, no, it's not over till the fat cat's home with the money. Right? Because the documents went ahead. After the judge 
dismiss all the charges on Cook Street, all that did was made the police look like fools playing around with the law of the bar, of the court. It wasn't dropped. The case wasn't dropped. It was dismissed. Big difference between dropped and dismissed. The police didn't say we're dropping the case because we got no evidence. The court said there's no evidence. The judge and the registrar said there's no evidence to convict us. So anyway, that's the end of that. But the documents are still carrying the fraud in them through the system. Now that's my gripe. I'm having a court hearing on Monday. I'm coming back to that, racing down to have the meeting. <clears throat> that's all right because I, I have plenty of practice at presenting meetings. Um, oh, I've got to make sure I've got my koha box to put the koha in uh, for on the front of the table. So anyway, um, um, that's put aside for the minute because it does have a bearing on how I performed in front of the police from outside the doors of court. They, they, they should have called me in because the boys all went in, the marshals, that yanked everybody, that's what they say, yanked them all out of the office, have been relieved of any charges. Just like that. Anyway, somebody's information got them off. I'm saying these documents here cited the police woman and the police themselves. The citations would have done it. I don't think there was any other citations put in a commercial corporate crown trust system in that way. Anyway, it's all over. So, <clears throat> I want to um, outline the title project of the potential of having those turbines in our waters as model, right, as a model, and to raise the funds for that model to be built. Okay, so everything I think is on a large scale. It is not a little bit here in a little bit of land and a little, it's a big thing to attract attention to something that big had to have legs on it, okay? And our friend, Eru, kindly said to me, you're dreaming. I said, yeah, I always dream. I always dream about big things that it's possible. I said, these turbines I'm thinking of putting in the water, it's nothing new. They've got them running in Scotland, big ones, just like this one. And if it was in the water, it'd be making power and income from the water. You've got to pay your power to the power board and it's not always there because you get the power cut, it goes off, it runs out of diesel. You see? That's what I mean. There's no real source of income other than fish when it's running. And that's about it from the sea. But it's beyond anybody here because it's not known. There's turbines, I think, in the Kaipara Harbour the, the early day ones um, but even the size of that project didn't go up to what it was but they have got a turbine in there <coughs> operating so here on the east coast is something that's not believable I, I can understand that I can understand they don't need to know about it or don't want it somebody else might yeah don't be surprised if someone else picks it up and puts it there. And there's nothing anybody can do about it because that's about what this country is run on. John Keith. What he says goes. What I say goes too. You see? Now test it out with the police. Police got it wrong with me on Cook Street. And all those people in that land block got it wrong. They set all this thing up and didn't realise that it was nothing in it. That's why I tried to tell them in the first place. They haven't got the title. I've got it. It's here. 
for Auckland, the whole of Auckland, and the whole country for that matter. See? So I'm not going to go down that track. All I want to do is get on the land and start doing something. I haven't gone on the land yet. It's taken this long just to plan this business. And we'll see where it goes. We'll see where it goes. But anyway, I put the video together just to let you know I'm feeling quite excited about the tidal turbines. It's my passion to have those because I've watched them all these years going through all the trials and mistakes that are potential cost to the initial investment. So I've looked at all that research and found the best way to get around anything so the turbines go straight in water. I'm going to get consent from the Marae and their committee and their people to put this project in the drawing boards to the British where I've got a company there now, Marae Powerhouse Group Limited, to gather the whole world around that turbine. Okay? I think it's been out online long enough. Talked about. Now it's time to build it. Alright? All the facts are there. All the information is there for it. And one company in Australia, Investments, are waiting for the Constitution. See, so I've got to race back and put that together before 15 days to lodge the prospectus share prospectus and the Articles of Association into the company's house in London. You see, I've got all that to do yet, myself. I was talking three hours this morning with my friends in Scotland, um, Andy and, and um, um, Jackie. They're going to be looking after Scotland with this project, the pound note and all the rest of it things inside this flag, thanks to Ngāpui and their contract in this world, okay? It's just coming to life. It's got a little flame there to light it and set it alight and into business around the world. We'll set up for that. So, um, uh, to Edu, thank you Edu, Paina, uh, although we haven't met, might have been on a football field way back in the early days. I was playing for Ngati rugby team and Tiki Tiki with the ma ma manuals, the big boys, Bobby Manuel and John Manuel and um, um, Pat Raro, he does, and um, all the rest of them. So that's who I am, the hooker in that team in those early days. I'd love to have a rugby team, Timothy Reed. I'd love to have a rugby team down there. Just a little one, a Maui one. And make their legs go fast. See? Make them run up and down the hill. Over there. Down to the beach and back up the hill again. In the sand. Alright? Yeah, they'll be really, really good. Really, really good. And a basketball team. Anyway, that's just pipe cream, that one. But the tur turbines is not a pipe cream. It is, it's, it's already real, and I didn't have to invent anything, because it's spinning in the water. All you have to do is make one that does similar or better. There. So, that's a bit of skill, and lots of employment. I'm going back there to see if I can drum up the support to make employment for the community with a crowdfunding project. Right? That's what I wanted to do. Uh, and, um, oh, someone's talking to me online on Facebook. I always have that all the time. But I'll keep this short. Uh, and um, I wanted to, to uh, <coughs> call Kingi Totoa, who's
first before I go, just to let them know. I'm on the way, down to the east coast, wind my little legs up, and push the accelerator and go. I'll see if I can get him. I'm just checking with him. That's my chief up in Napoli. Kiki, go. I'm just going on my way down the east coast today. Yeah, I got my hui uh, with uh, Eli Paina. I just got off the phone to him, and <clears throat> so I'm just making my way straight to Rutoria to the marae there, and so uh, uh, I'll have a meeting and come back with some some result from that, uh, and then I can sit down with you and um, go over the, the the plans of what what we plan to do for 28th. And uh, the England thing is looking good. And I won my case, right? So that's out of the way. The police are out of my road. I can pop them off one by one now. Uh, and 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 so I've got that cleared out of my mind. But uh, I still I still want to finish off what I had with the barrister, and then go on to our next next stage of the flag itself. Okay flag itself and you and then putting two and two together with the financial crowdfunding crowdfunding for the East Coast project and the other one in, in Dover in England and this is all pre pre doing before the 28th so that I have a reason to go to put the flag up over there on that end right and you're the king on this end which is what I've, I'm, I'm saying of that title that I've got authority from to do what I do um, uh, on any piece of land. It's it's one land, can you? It's one title, right? You can forget about uh, Manukau or everybody else. It, that it's the contract that you you hold. Okay, so that's your title to straight to Westminster of the contract, and and that's it. Nobody can argue with that. No one's going to argue with that. None of anybody's business. All right. So that's all I'll let you know that I'm happy on my way down with my little accelerator and and, and keep my eyes on the road, take my, taking my pills. Oh, I'll try to, I'll, 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 I'll try to. I'm going to take my, my gear down, but um, it, the, weather, the way the weather's looking, it's not that, not that crack of shot. But as long as I get the, the consent of the people and, and to get on the land thingy, and once I'm on the land, we've got Quakers galore, right? I'm going to get that 45 hectare block, even though I signed up with Te Tumu Tumu. And, and so I'm getting the people, people don't like Te Tumu Tumu. I'm going with Te Tumu Tumu because it saves me the argument of, of getting on the land. But those fisher people over there are going along with me, what I want to do. So... We've got pluses, Kingy, that's all I want to say. I'm, I'm in the happy chappy, and and uh, Catherine is happy, and, and Ashley is happy that I'm, I'm vindicated. Right? See you. Bye. All right. There you go. That's the chief. Kingy Toto. <coughs> Radio Watt here, 6.03 a.m. Auckland. Monday. Top radio announcer. Maori ra announcer. Very good. Him and Sue Nakora used to be on the radio quite a bit. And I was there with Vappy Cooper on the Maori radio. And she wouldn't let me talk. She says, Don, can you take me to work? So I'll drive her there. Just like a little slave. And I'm sitting there waiting for my turn on the radio. Sitting there beside her and saying, Come on, come on, I want to go on the radio. And blow me down. She just rattles on and I'm invisible. But anyway, <coughs> it meant well because I I got on the radio anyway. Dennis Hansen and, and was on the radio, I'll get on with him and he'll talk about seaweed and echo farms. I'm still talking about echo farms, nothing yet. There's not even an echo farm out there. We got it coming. It's coming. It, and our mate Ilu is saying, "Oh, John, you're 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 dreaming." I said, "Yeah, yeah, I'm dreaming." 
Yeah. Um, hang on, I'm going to answer this. Okay. I will. Now I answer my Facebook. Facebook has been very good um, because without it I would not have got a lot of information out there freely giving and also YouTube I'm going to pick up on YouTube how to run business because it's working quite good uh, so far uh, so uh, Kingi thank you and Il thank you I will make my way shortly I'm just packing up a few things and then start driving out of Auckland. When you get to the Pompey Hill you think, oh, there's a long way to Tipperary and or Tikitere in Rotorua, my friend Moira. I'm going past there and go past Jamie and Fakatani. Uh, but I won't um, call in to see her. I'll just carry on going because I've only got this on my mind and a lot to do. Okay, so that's all for this video. Only to say uh, that we, our Cook Street uh, case was won because the police had insufficient evidence. I know, I can tell you now what it was. It was no seal. No seal on their documents to give them authority to do what they did, but they did anyway. They still cashed up. That's the offence. They cashed up the money. I've said it enough times. And that was that. It's still a case with me. Whose money it is. They've been robbing. Right in front of you. Okay? So, uh, uh, from that, those, it's left those people wide open. What the Pope says is they're liable now. After I issued Motu Proprio, Motu Propria, citations to my barrister he would have had told the judge in my absence in front of the court we were texting each other like this in a court I didn't go in I'm standing outside the door the lady comes out the one that calls your name out that you're looking for you I said to her oh, tell the barrister I'm coming back next week and I'm here. And off she goes. She says, okay. So that would have gone on the record that my court case is next week. I'm still waiting for him to call me. He won't call me. Won't acknowledge the emails I sent him. You'll see it online. I'm rather flabbergasted as much as you are with what's happening there. Okay. Wait on a second. Desmond. Oh yeah. I'm just about to leave in a in a minute, and I'm on a video at the moment. So we're talking while I'm making the video. Th this is Desmond, my my uh, right hand man down the east coast, Desmond. Uh, just alerting him to meet me at um, heading a, a Te Horo Marae in Port Awanui. On Saturday morning at 6:15 a.m., with Irupainga, the Marae chief, Komatua. I got off the phone not so long ago that we will be down there. I'll be coming from Auckland. I'm leaving in a minute, taking up my my things, and I'll make my way down. But so this is Desmond. Say hello, Desmond. Uh, yeah, that's my mate. Uh, so he. He'll be responsible for looking after things when we get it sorted uh, in that community at uh, um, Port Awanui. So we'll leave it there with this video. I'm only pleased that he's come on the radio. I've just got off the phone to Kingi Taurua, our chief in, uh, up in Nabui on Radio Watea. So he's happy uh, that we are being vindicated in our court case of Cook Street is dismissed. But I haven't finished with that. I'll deal with that when I come back on Monday. In my court hearing, I have to fight my way into court 
rather than fight your way out of port, I'm trying to get in there. And my barrister sidelined me and said, it's all over, John, finished. Just like that. But I'm not happy about that. So anyway, I'll end this video and I'll carry on talking to Desmond. We'll see you later. Bye, everyone. See you soon.